So you are listening to the We Are West Ham podcast. And as promised on Tuesday's little explainer episode that I released in the absence of Will and Reese this week, I've got a, a separate opposition view episode for you all, which has been released separately to the normal episode that you're all used to. Um, but the show must go on. I've done all the heavy lifting this week, all the hard graft to make sure that all of our listeners get the content that they mm. that they look forward to every week. And I'm delighted to say ahead of this Sunday's huge top four clash in the Premier League, don't get to say that very often, um, more often than not recently though, uh, is Steve Hoare from Red Men TV going to speak to us all about all about Liverpool and, and how, how we're going to try and avoid a, a thrashing from Salah FC. How are you, Steve? Yeah, I'm eating very well. Thanks for having me on. Pleasure. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, fresh off the back of Champions League win over Atletico Madrid on, on Wednesday night, uh, it turns out that West Ham and Liverpool are showing everyone how it's done in Europe. Both 100% records so far. Uh, you must be buzzing with the start, given given the group that you've got. Yeah, I mean, like I say, to, to guarantee there's a group winners with two games left to go, given the busy schedule that's ahead, it, it really does. It's a big hint, a big help for Liverpool. So basically those last two games are pretty much dead rubber. So we can do what we want. We can rest players. If anyone's 97% fit, then they just don't play. Like if it, it, it's as simple as that, we can we can look after players. Also, we've uh, like yourselves, we've qualified for the uh, quarter final of that League Cup, and that is played this December twenty second, which is mm-hmm. right in the middle of two league games. So, Liverpool might be able to give more you know preference to that game because beforehand they, we play Porto at home and we've got to go to the San Siro. We can basically pick any teams we want there. You know, mention Mo Salah, he can have a rest or whoever Van Dijk, the goalkeeper, whoever it is, and then we might be able to pick a slightly stronger team for that Leicester game. So, yeah, listen, Liverpool and Champions League groups over, even under Jurgen Klopp, like, quite often, more often than not, anyway, we've, we've left it to the last game where we've had to get a result. We've done that three or four times where we've had to go, go somewhere and win or beat someone around field. Napoli have been that team a couple of times already. There was a game against Spartak Moscow where we had to win the last game. So to have this, and this has probably been the toughest group we've had, so to have it tied up with, with four games, Played is amazing. Like I say, our record against Atletico Madrid before the two games in this group, we'd, we'd only ever beat them in one game and that was, we won that game but we still went out on aggregate so it wasn't really a win. So to beat mm. them home and away at, at, at this point of the group is, is amazing. Yeah, so it, it's been a really, really good couple of days for Liverpool. But again, we, we drew against Brighton's and heads were down a little bit but, but the, the response was amazing. Yeah, I mean, talking about that Brighton game, obviously still unbeaten in the Premier League. Uh, the only team currently without a defeat so far in the Premier League this season. Um, but as you mentioned, that that two-all draw with Brighton, um, I think you were two 0 up as well. Um, yeah. If I'm if I'm right in saying, yeah, yeah. what happened there? Because it, it seemed a little bit. I know Brighton have been good this season, um, but what happened there? Because it seemed very uncharacteristic of Liverpool, particularly at Anfield, uh, losing a two-goal advantage. Yeah, well, you say that, mate, but we've we've actually dropped a lot of points from uh, from winning positions this season. So we, we drew at Brentford when we were winning that game. Man City, we drew when we were winning that game twice. We had again the, the Brighton game. To be honest, even when we were two 0 up, Brighton were really playing well, and they, they had a foothold in the game. They had the first chance of that game. We scored after like four minutes, but they have a one on one just before that, so they were always in the game. The, and to be honest, with you, the 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 out. They won the midfield battle. We didn't have Fabinho playing, so we had Henderson Jones and Oxley Chamberlain on the pitch at the time uh, because there was an injury to Naby Keita. And the balance was just wrong. Ox and Jones in the same team are just very, very attacking players. Henderson isn't a natural defensive midfielder. So basically, they overran us. It, it was as simple as that. So Basuma and Mwepu just, just, and then they had Lalana. They played the false nine with Trossard. And they just overran us. It, it was as simple as that. We just missed Fabinho's presence. We have him back against Madrid, and it's so much better. Even, again, against Madrid in the, the first game at their place, uh, Fabinho doesn't start. And again, we're 2-0 up, and it goes to 2-2. And then, obviously, we bring Fabinho on. And, then, and obviously, there's a red card for them as well, but it controls it. So, Fabinho's huge for us. Um, since, obviously, Gini Wijnaldum left in the summer, so he, he sometimes will play that defensive role if we needed him. When he's not there, and Henderson can do that job, but I think he needs more discipline from the players in front of him. He needs a bit more help. With Fabinho, can just do it by himself, and everyone else can just go and do what they need to do. Henderson needs, if, if Henderson's there, he probably needs a Wine Alden from last season, or a James Milner who's injured now. Someone who's a bit more, a bit more busy, a bit more defensively minded in front of him to help him a little bit because he's not natural at it. And we didn't have that. And I say Brighton overran us. And, and in the end, like, 
two all flattered us a little bit. Like they probably should have won that game. They had clear chances to win it. Obviously, we mm. had chances to go three and up, and we had goals disallowed and stuff. But so did they. But yeah, obviously, last night was a bit of a rarity. It was a clean sheet. Like we haven't kept many clean sheets, and I think that that's the. Obviously, listen. We, we haven't lost a game for twenty five games. It's the you know the best record Liverpool have had since like the, the you know eighteen hundreds in terms of unbeaten runs. But there's been moments in there where we have looked a little bit vulnerable. You talk about Fabinho being so important, and um, I'd actually written in my questions before I'd realised that he that he was kind of back fit and looks like he might feature at the weekend. He did feature against Atletico Madrid, but Naby Keita's injured. You've already mentioned Milner. Is is that going to affect? Liverpool moving forward, particularly on Sunday, particularly with Keita out? Yeah, well, there's a lot of injuries, to be honest. So, Keita's out, Milner's out. It looks like Curtis Jones will be out as well. He, he picked on an injury in train and Joe Gomez is injured. Roberto Firmino hobbled off uh, with a hamstring injury of his own. So, yeah, we, we have got a lot of injuries. The good news is, I feel like it seems to be... We, 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 when one drops out, thankfully another one comes back. So, although we did lose Jones, Keita, Milner, we did get Fabinho back. He played an hour and then Thiago played half an hour. So it looks like both of those are available. So the options for the weekend will be Fabinho's there, Henderson's there, you'll have Thiago, you'll have Alex Oxley Chamberlain. So there's there's probably enough to, there's probably enough for us to go around. But yeah, we are that last season we had no centre back, they all kept getting injured. This season, like our centre midfielders have, have been injured constantly. Um <laughs> it's been a constant rotation of them. Not one of them really has been, has been able to stay completely fit the whole entire time. So it has been constant change in there. But yeah, it looks like we'll have, again, I think Liverpool's strongest midfield on paper is Fabinho, Henderson, Thiago. It looks like all three of those, barring anything between now and then, should be fit to play. So I imagine that'll be what we see uh, on Sunday. Any chance Salah's injured? Any chance of that, mate? I mean, I hope not. Uh, Bobby Firmino's injured, so he he, yeah. hobbled, he he came on and then went off uh, against Atletico Madrid. But so yeah, again, we don't know what's going to happen to you now and then. But it looks like it's going to be Salah, Mane, and Jota. To be fair to Mo, he hasn't scored in two games now, so I don't know if that gives you confidence or it makes you think he's he's due one. He, he's probably due one. He doesn't really yeah. doesn't often go three games without scoring one. But the flip side is Jota on his last couple of starts has scored. Scores are all traffic. He scores again last night. Sadio Mane scores against Brighton and scores last night. So one thing Liverpool haven't found difficult, regardless of who it's been, is scoring goals. I think every away game we've played, uh, other than a Preston League Cup game, even that one we scored two with a reserve team. We scored three in every game away. We are mm-hmm. we are, we bang goals in for fun at, at away grounds. Like I don't know if that teams have to come at us a little bit in front of their own fans or whatever. But yeah, we scored you know five at Old Trafford. We scored th- uh, three against Brentford. We scored th- three against Leeds. Obviously. Uh, the Norwich in the League Cup, we, we have we, we we have scored a lot of goals away from home. Even in Europe, we went to Atletico Madrid and scored three. Went to Porto and banged five past them or something like that. So that that's the one thing that we haven't struggled with. There's been a few issues at the other end of the pitch, but in front of goal, we've been absolutely prolific. Yeah, that is quite worrying. To be fair, mate. I'm, <laughs> I, I, I seem to. I mean, I, 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 West Ham have this have a history of if the players sort of not scored for a few games or. Always coming back and playing against us after after leaving or something like that, he's bound to score against us. So the fact that Seller hasn't scored in two means he's probably in line for a double hat trick or something like that. Or something. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's um, got it in his locker, mate. He's, he's more than capable. Definitely, definitely. I mean, he is the work, uh, the best player in the world right now, one hundred percent. This fixture last season, um, back in January, uh, Liverpool won that one three one. Um, it was a game that was tipped beforehand that, you know, West Ham are in a good place. I think we were, we were in the top six at that point or edging towards it. And Liverpool were having that uh, terrible injury crisis at the back. I think you had Nat Phillips and um, I can't remember who else lined up. Miss Williams for being might been, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a makeshift defence. And everyone before that game was like, this is, you know, this is this is the perfect opportunity for West Ham to, to beat Liverpool, you know, strengthen their top six Um their top six credentials, and in the end, it was a comfortable three-one win. I think Salah scored that incredible goal on the on the counter attack. Yeah. Um, looking back now, I think West Ham showed Liverpool quite a little bit too much respect that day. Um, how do you see it going this this time? Because essentially, Liverpool are in a better place now, but West Ham are in a very similar place. Um, yeah, yeah. Fans fans are going to be in the ground. Do you think it'll be a, a tighter contest this time around? 
To be fair, but like I think I think we've won the last four games against West Ham, but I think they've all been relatively close. They haven't been, you know, they haven't been comfortable wins for Liverpool. Um, what I would say is at that stadium, we we tend we tend to have done all right. I think the big openness of that stadium does help Liverpool. We've got I can count on um, just have to me like two or three really you know counter attacking moves where it's been a West Ham corner that we scored. Off. I think that one when you yeah. referenced this one. I've been yeah. Alex Oxley Chamberlain. I was in that ground when he does that one as well. So we have done that before. I think that does help us a little bit in terms of, of how we like to play. I think because West Ham won't sit back. West Ham are an attacking football team. So listen, if we can keep the back door shut, then like we are lethal on the counter attack. The pace is frightening of, of Salah and Mane and I had Jota as well. We have pace to burn. So that that's the one positive. But like I say, I, I think you know we went to Old Trafford a couple of weeks ago and absolutely snot and Man United, but West Ham are now are better than Man United. So in terms of our away games, like it, it, domestically, at least this is the toughest one we've had so far. Um Obviously, we went to I think we went to Wofford and battered them. We've been we've been a few different places, but I think West Ham are in a good moment. Like you mentioned before, they, they look strong. They look like they're in form. The, the thing that impressed me West Ham is the spine. So goalkeeper, centre back, centre mid, striker. It's a real strong spine that gives you a chance in any game. So listen, I quite like it when teams come at us. Like I don't like it when teams like even at home park the bus against us. We're more than capable of doing it because, like I say, we've scored three in every away game, but. Yeah, I think the openness of the game, especially against West Ham, has tended to suit us. It's almost been a bit, a bit of a boxing, you know, boxing match of like whoever lands that last punch because both teams have been in those games. Uh, mm-hmm. And then again, the home game uh, last season, it's a late goal and stuff like that that, that helps us. So, I, I think it's gonna be a good game. I think it's gonna be a close game. I can see why Sky have picked it for their game of the week because it's it's, it's a, it is a really good game between really two really good teams. Like I would say, is that. Brighton dominated our midfield the other day. It will be a different midfield at the weekend, but like West Ham's centre midfield, uh, everything that goes on there is really, really it was probably the the best area of the pitch from from what I can see from afar. So, I think that is key. I think again, I, I can't underestimate how important it is to have Fabinho in there and it allowed the others to go. But I think I think whoever wins, and I, I, again, I'm hoping it's us. Like I, I, I can't see it by me more than one goal, and I think both teams will score. I think it could be a two-one that kind of thing because I think it's two very good teams at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the midfield there. I think the next question was, you know, which battle are you most looking forward to seeing between the two teams? Is it, you know, is it the midfield or is it, I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing Antonio <laughs> up against Virgil van Dijk. I think that'd be a really interesting battle. Um, is there any, is there anywhere, any battle that you see that you think that could, that could be the decider? Whoever wins that battle on, on the pitch could could decide the game. Yeah, it depends. Are you guys, I'm guessing, it's, is it going to be Cresswell playing left back? So he's going it to be, be yeah. yeah, so he's got Mo Salah. So if you can keep Mo Salah relatively quiet, you, you've got a chance. Like if you can't, he'll just control games, he'll just run games. So that, that United game, he just he dominates. Even against Brighton, the goal, come, the first goal comes from Mo Salah doing really, really well. So I think that's the key one. Like you're never going to stop him. Like it's impossible to, 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 you know, he's going to have his chance, he's going to do something. But can you keep him quiet and can you stop the supply to him? If, if Cresswell is able to do that and a bit of help in front of him, because obviously Trent is the one who's feeding Mo Salah more often. We've got Virgil playing the, the big diagonals. Like, that's the key. Like, that's what we'll do. There's no secret what Liverpool are going to try and do. They're going to try and get Mo Salah the ball as early and often as they can and then see what comes of it. Because, like I say, so far, there hasn't really been a left back who's been able to, to stop him. I, I saw Brighton put a tweet out at the weekend after the draw. I think they praised their left back saying they had Mo Salah in his pocket. Well, <laughs> so when Mo Salah set the first goal up inside like 10 minutes from that position. So it, it, it's not, it wasn't that. But that, that was deemed a success for them. That the only thing Mo Salah did in that game was was create a goal and probably have, nearly have another one as well. Like that that was deemed success. So that that's the key battle. If Cresswell can have, I don't know, if he can win three quarters of his battles against Mo Salah, he'll have done well. And, and if he can't, then I would fancy Liverpool to win because like you mentioned earlier, he's, he's the best player in the world at the moment. He's on form, he's unstoppable. No one's managed to really find a way. To, even, yeah, again, I mentioned before, he hasn't scored in two games, but he's been very, very good in both of them pretty much. So that, that's the that's the key battle on the pitch. If Cresswell can do half a job on Mo Salah, then, then West Ham will have a good chance. Great stuff. Well, let's get a score prediction. I know you've kind of half given one already, but let's, let's have a score prediction from you, Steve. Yeah, I think we'll win 2-1. But I think it'll be a very, very close game. I just like I Liverpool scored bad goals for fun this season, um, so I, I imagine we are going to get a couple. Listen, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was better. You know, West Ham two all doesn't doesn't sign out. West Ham win three. Two, nothing seems unreasonable, but mm-hmm. I, I'm going to go two one. We looked better at the back with Matip back yesterday. Um, him and Van Dijk looked really good together again. Like Atleti didn't really have a sniff. They had a goal disallowed that was offside. Other than that, he didn't really do anything. So. 
Antonio's record against us is amazing. He always scores against us. So you're probably going to give him. I'm going to give him that one, but I'll, I'll give us two. Yeah, I think I think from a West Ham point of view, as long as the performance is at the same level as it has been um, this season, then you know if if Liverpool do run out narrow winners, then I don't think we can be too disheartened. I definitely think there'll be goals as well. I've I've predicted a two-all draw, yep. um, and I think any West Ham fan will will take the point now. If offered it, so um, but yeah, no, really looking forward to the game, Steve, and really appreciate you you joining us and giving us the load down in Liverpool ahead of Sunday. No, it is an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for having me, JJ. Great stuff, and guys, thanks for listening. I know it's been a little bit different, a different We Are West End podcast than than you're normally used to this week, but uh, we'll be back back to normal again next week once Will's back. Um, as always, you can follow us on Twitter at We Are underscore West Ham. Get us on YouTube. If you're listening to this, just search for We Are West Ham podcast and you can watch this episode back, plus all the other ones we've done before. And um, look forward to seeing you next week.